Hey guys, I'm Songbird Ultralight, and today I'm here to talk to you about the poncho tarp that I used on the last 600 miles of the Appalachian Trail. So awesome. So the poncho tarp is a pretty amazing piece of gear. Um, I ended up carrying it um, the first time in the spring in 2017 when I had decided to go back and I was gonna finish the whole AT um, and you know finish my goal of completing the entire thing. And uh, I thought, you know what? I'm tired of sitting at my tent all the time. I'm tired of carrying all this weight. I end up sleeping in shelters a lot. And uh, I, really, I really don't feel like I need a tent anymore. Uh, I had before I got out of the White Mountains, uh, I was in Gorham before I got into the White Mountains, really. I sent my mesh inner home and I just kept my tent poles, my ground sheet, and like my fast fly setup for the Big Agnes Fly Creek 2. So I effectively just had a ground sheet and a tarp with like a frame. And that was pretty cool. Um, and I still didn't use it that much. I still ended up just shelter hopping 90% of the time with my friend. So. I thought, you know what, I need to, when I come back, I'm gonna be by myself and I'm gonna be going fast and light. I need to have a lighter shelter system. I need to be able to go from shelter to shelter. I've been having problems with my coat, rain jacket style coat, and um, just not having pit zips or um, even if I did have pit zips, the waterproof material just trapped all my sweat and heat. So it was almost like I got as wet while I was hiking in the rain with my raincoat on as I would without. And it was like, a lot of people stopped wearing rain jackets uh, in the dead of summer because it was like, I can be wet and then dry off and be fine and like take a shower almost. Or I can just wear my rain jacket and I can get sweaty and then I can have salt crystals all over me from extra sweat and my clothes will get gross the next few days. And so really I thought I need something better than a rain jacket. Also, hiking, usually you'll have a pack cover. It's a piece of waterproof material that goes over a non-waterproof pack. That pack cover kind of holds on to the corners of your pack and you can kind of secure it on with a strap. It keeps rain from soaking your bag. Um, now, I've found pack covers to be pretty useless. The only time they're really awesome is when you have like a big tree you can hang your pack on and then your pack cover's on it and the tree stops most of the rain from touching the back panel. The pack cover doesn't protect anything on the back side of the pack, dripping down behind your back and getting it soaked through from the back side. Or when you sweat, um, your pack cover, if you don't have a waterproof bag, doesn't keep, you know, you have to have a pack liner, you have to have a pad in here or something to keep the sweat from going through. Um, but mainly that rainwater is gonna collect on your head and shoulders and drip down into your bag anyway. So the pack cover is kind of this like false sense of security. It doesn't really do much. Like if you're gonna get caught in the rain for like, 10 minutes, um, you might get away with a pack cover, but if you're gonna be in the rain for, like on the AT, just days at a time, rain, you need to have a pack liner, unless you have a waterproof pack. So I've used pack covers, I didn't like them, I switched to a Cuban bag, um, my Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 2400, great bag. But even with that Hyperlite bag, I had that on and I had my rain jacket and I was hiking and man did I get hot. And I felt like I just had to make the decision to get wet instead of being hot and sweaty, right? Like I said before. And then with the waterproof bag, you still have the problem of the pockets of the waterproof bag filling up with water. So if you have waterproof back pocket um, and a waterproof side pockets, so this was a big problem in really heavy rain. So those big pockets, right? They're gonna fill up with water. Like there's one point where I leaned forward to tie my shoes and water just dumped over the back of my head and all over my back from what had caught in that waterproof Cuban pocket. So those Cuban bags do a really good job, but sometimes the drain holes don't work or they get clogged or there are no drain holes in the case of the 
uh, Appalachian ultralight balloon pack that I hiked with this last 600 miles. And sometimes you want to keep stuff in those exterior pockets and you don't necessarily want them to get soaked. So if I have a spare layer like this in the back pocket, I don't really want that water soaking in there and you know I want access to that layer if I stop and I get cold. If I want to peel off my wet t-shirt and put on something dry but I don't want to open up my backpack and get in there for something and then get that exposed, the inside of my bag exposed to the wet. Like if it's raining you don't want to open up your bag even if it's waterproof. You can kind of stand over it but it's still going to get wet. So the poncho tarp solved a lot of problems for me. I, I don't know where I found it. I think um, I was looking for small tarps online and I saw maybe the Sea of Summit Poncho Tarp and then I looked on REI Garage when I found my REI Minimalist Bivy. I was looking for a bivy system and I thought okay I need a small tarp and then I saw a video of a guy on the PCT uh, using the Golight Poncho Tarp and I thought that's pretty much all I need. I need something that I can just use in an emergency like where I can't get to a shelter or whatever and that'll be my that'll be my cover that'll be my shelter system and then my waterproof bivy will protect me from the side spray, the rest of the elements, like the poncho tarp, the small tarp, will block the majority of what's gonna bother me, like the wind, the rain, etc. So I purchased this and my REI Minimalist Bivy at the same time. It was around March 4th, north from Hot Springs, and I immediately noticed that in the really cold, nasty rain, where I would have been hot with my jacket on, and I didn't want to go and get wet, you know, because it was cold and I didn't want to soak my clothing. I don't carry extra clothing, really. At that time, I carried long johns and things, but I didn't want to get my normal clothes wet, right? Putting this on, the poncho tarp covered my backpack and covered me, and the backpack kind of creates this space where it pulls the poncho tarp away from your back and creates, like, ventilation pockets going up underneath your arms and along your back where there's this space between the poncho and the bag like this. So while I'm walking, uh, any breeze or just me moving means that there's air going in there and I really, like, especially with my armpits exposed, I really don't get that hot. Um, it's much, much, much better than trying to hike in a rain jacket, like a waterproof rain jacket. So one funny thing is in the quest to find a more breathable rain jacket, a lighter weight rain jacket, something that 90% of the time, maybe not on the AT, but let's say, you know, you're hiking and it's nice weather, right? 90% of the time that rain jacket is just carried weight, like you're not actually wearing it, hiking in it. So in my quest to find the lighter rain jacket, I went ahead and I got a uh, Helium H2, so it was pretty expensive. And I thought, yes, now I've got a breathable, lightweight rain jacket. This is like the best of the best, right? So now I'm like, this is this is what I need. And I put on my Cuban fiber Appalachian ultralight backpack, and I put on this Outdoor Research Helium 2 jacket, and I start hiking. And you know what? That breathable, you know, two-layer rain jacket, it's better than a waterproof rain jacket, okay? You can tell the difference. Um, but it's not so significant that you still want to hike in it. Like, this last 600 miles, I brought it as like a wind shirt. I brought it as like extra warmth, like lightweight, extra rain protection, extra warmth. I basically used it like a, like a wind shirt. Um, and that's kind of how I treat it because I went out and I hiked in the rain with this jacket. The two layer didn't feel waterproof to me. It didn't make me feel warm. It didn't make me feel safe in cold rain. And so I had to change it up again, right? So I moved on to the poncho tarp. I thought this answers my shelter situation. This is my rain gear. And I saw that it was still nylon, still poly, you know, silicone impregnated plastic fiber weave, right? Really tough stuff. This is, I think, is only 30 denier. And I sit on it like this. I use it as a ground sheet when I'm cowboy camping on a nice night. I string it up as a tarp. In one video, uh, I went out with my buddy and it was kind of a bad pitch and the rain filled it up with little pounds of water. Dude, a little bit of a bad pitch. I collected some rain water. We could drink that though. And it didn't pull any of the stitches. It just stretched a little bit. It didn't it didn't rip any of the stitching around the the guy loops, you know, the, the attachment points. Uh, where grommets would normally be. These are sewn on instead. I like that better. It was a bad pitch, but it showed my buddy, in particular, just how waterproof this is. 
it is it is perfectly 100% waterproof. There's no drips coming through, uh, and I'll link the video uh, so you guys can watch that, but there's no drips coming through the fabric. But so now I had a poncho with a hood that covered me, that covered my backpack, that had more ventilation, and I just settled on it. Like, this is the best rain gear, winter, summer, whatever, that I've ever used. I started with a Columbia rain jacket. I moved on to a uh, Patagonia torrent shell with pit zips and everything. Uh, it, it kept me alive, but I didn't feel safe and waterproof in it. You know, it had the DWR treatment and everything, and I don't know if that failed, but it wet out. And, and that was my most dangerous day on trail. I hiked uh, from like 4.30 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon, and I did like 22 miles, 24 miles. And it was in Maine, it was in summer in the 100 mile wilderness. I was cold and I was wet. Um, I didn't feel safe in it. I had to get in my tent, I had to get in my sleeping bag and I needed to warm up. Um, I didn't stay warm and dry, you know? Um, I mean, it traps body heat while I was hiking, but as soon as I stopped, I was wet and cold, you know? So from there, I moved on to the OR Helium 2 jacket, right? Everyone agrees, this is ultralight, this is like the best jacket. And, and then that kind of failed me as a full-on rain jacket because it's, it, I also didn't feel safe. You know, it's, it's fine if you're on the move and you get to a shelter or you put up your tent and you get in and you're cool, but I wanted something that was more protective. I wanted something truly waterproof, right? So here I go spending all this money on rain jackets and then this like $60 used this was used when I bought it and it's still in mint condition REI garage used like discontinued poncho pretty damn cheap for what it does just blew all of the other rain gear I'd ever used just out of water hundreds of dollars on jackets and all kinds of things and this is this is what works um, I was pretty surprised how well it did um, when I first set out in the spring, I thought, you know what, I'm not sure about this. It has, it has snap holes down the sides, like it's slits for more ventilation, honestly, where the square poncho is snaps together on the sides to make like a, a pillowcase that fits over your head, you know? It's, your, it's open where your arms go through. I thought, you know what, maybe I need to pair this with a rain jacket, right? And so in the really bad rain and in the cold, hiking northbound through uh, North Carolina and into Virginia and stuff, uh, for, for a good month and a half, we had snow on the ground. April 15th was the last day that it snowed or we had snow on the ground. Oh, there's so much snow. And there's snow going down into my trail runners. And you know, they can be Gore-Tex or waterproof or whatever, but snow gets down to that ankle. Man, it's getting cold and wet. In the morning, after that, it never came back. But it was cold. It was cold and snowing and wet and raining and icy and nasty those, those, during that period. We had days where it came up into like 48 degree range, you know, 45, 48, and it rained all day and we hiked in it. Uh, me and my buddy two times. Uh, I hiked with him for like 80 miles. Um, I went with him from Boots Off Hostel to Damascus and then from Damascus um, we went together with his dog and we went through the Grayson Highlands and then we came back to Damascus when there was bad weather. Oh, there's a thunderstorm coming and uh, Trail Angel was saying that there's potential for tornado weather. Help me! <laughs> help me! Help me! Help me! So we're gonna stop a car uh, one way or another. That was before I was uh, shooting videos, so that's on my Instagram. If you want to go back to 2017, you can see the part of the hike where I had all this equipment for the first time. So we're hiking in the rain, and I have just this on, and maybe my long johns. And I have the sleeves pushed up so they don't get wet. And uh, we're hiking, and I'm, I'm perfectly fine, and I'm dry. I'm not sweaty, I'm dry. And uh, in the really cold rain, so that my pants don't get wet and soak up, I had shorts on, and I mean, I ju or I just wore my, uh, I just wore my compression shorts, and this, this really did work. So hundreds of dollars, like, I, I'm ashamed to admit it, hundreds of dollars trying to find a solution, and it was, it was right here in the poncho tarp. So after um, switching to the poncho tarp, I thought, you know, this is crazy, I'm never going back, right? And I started building all of my kit around this piece of gear. Like, this is what got me down to five pounds for my kit for this summer. Um, 
it's it's incredible how how easily everything else like a cascade effect happened after switching to this. Um, this inspired me to try the poncho quilt, where um, if you have a head slot on your sleeping quilt, you can open it up and snap it around you, and then have your just your arms sticking out down to about here. It covers you. In the morning, I don't have to really get out of bed. I just put the uh, quilt on as the poncho, wear my little sleeping cap, and uh, get ready and be warm. So that um, was multi-purpose. This is my shelter and my rain gear. That's my sleeping quilt and my insulation. It's really pretty incredible how much weight I lost um, switching to the poncho tarp and what that led to. So guys, it's cheap. It's really, really effective. It's insanely multi-purpose. Shelter, ground sheet, rain gear. I try to limit the amount of uh, uses that I put it as a ground sheet, only where I really need to. Um, it's not so expensive that I'm worried about beating it up and having to replace it. And it has survived use as a ground sheet. This is mainly for rain gear, so I try to treat it delicately. But honestly, like if I messed it up on a rock here for the first time and I got a hole in it, I would just go get a My Trail Co. poncho or go get a Sea to Summit poncho and replace it. Um, and and I, I wouldn't be too beat up about it, you know? Like, there's some nostalgia with this because I finished the trail with it and I hiked a huge portion of the trail with it. Um, like, probably half. But uh, it's, it's not something that's, like, irreplaceable, you know what I'm saying? It's not that $200 rain jacket that, oh my god, I got it caught on a, a broken branch and it just ripped a hole in my $200 jacket. Like, this kind of solves that wariness about actually using your gear. I like, I need to sit down somewhere clean and I just do it. I'm not afraid to use it. If this was a Cuban fiber poncho, I would not be sitting on it like this. It, it would never be used as a ground sheet, never, because it would be $200. So it's around seven ounces. I can put the exact weight in the description down below. It's fully waterproof. It's extremely multi-purpose, and of course, it's gonna be that shelter system. You can A-frame it, you can lean to it. Most of the time, I lean to it. It's an unbelievable pack cover, poncho pack cover. It protects my gear. It gives me a clean place to sit down and set everything up. It's, it's fantastic. I get a lot of protection and coverage out of this little weight thing. There's really no way, even if you just wanna get one to try it out, there's really no way that the poncho tarp is gonna do you wrong. So I really recommend that if you are going lighter, if you're looking for a better rain gear solution, if you use a pack cover, if you want like a small tarp to use with your baby sack, um, go for it, man. If, if, you, if you can get a little bit bigger poncho tarp, I think you can even use it with a hammock. We improvised in that video I was talking about where I did a kind of bad pitch and it collected all the water. We improvised this and used it as my friends um, tarp for hammock camping when it rained um, just a few weeks ago and it was cold. It got down uh, into the 50s in rain. If, if we had messed up, it, we would have been miserable. We would have been hiking back to the car in the middle of the night to go home. So it worked out and, it, and it's really, it really works really well. So I say check it out. So I'm gonna show you how the uh, synthetic puppy quilt works with this underneath it, how it fits underneath. And then second, I'm going to throw on my backpack and I'm gonna show you how this fits over the backpack. And then last, I'm gonna set up the poncho tarp as a tarp and show you that it actually gives you a lot of coverage for how small it is. Okay, so um, I'm gonna pull out my poncho quilt. I think it was the video before last. The last one was the bivy sack, which was awesome, awesome gear. I really, really liked reviewing that for you guys. And then uh, before that was the quilt. So if you wanna see this in more detail, you can go check out that video. So I'm just gonna throw this bad boy on. It's kinda chilly out here, fall is happening, so it's really not such a bad thing to have to put this on. All right, so like the poncho tarp, the poncho quilt is a poncho. Go figure, right? So um, usually what I do is I just kinda use the snaps on the quilt to secure it around myself in both directions, kind of keep it up. I, I can let it hang down around my butt if I'm really cold, but uh, here I'm trying to get it up out of the way. So I'm kind of snapping it up. It's more like a jacket that way. It's more contained. And then of course there's the uh, 
little strap here. I'm gonna clip that, and then it's uh, you can loosen a little bit so it's not compressing the insulation. Holds it all together, many layers on top of each other, and very puffy, and it's like a short sleeve jacket without a hood. It's gonna keep you really warm. This was my only insulation on the trail last 600 miles. Again, you can see that. I'll link it down in the description down below, uh, the poncho quilt. So now I'm gonna show you how the poncho tarp fits over this and works as a multi-layer. You've got your warm jacket and your rain jacket kind of system. See what I'm saying? All right, so last time I used the poncho tarp, was out camping and I used it as a shelter for my buddy's hammock. So I have this tied up so that the hood's sealed. It only takes a few seconds, depending on how you tied it up like this. And um, it's pretty easy to convert it back. It's not like a really involved process. There, we're done. Now it's poncho again, okay? So I'm gonna pull it over me. I'm gonna show you how this works. Real time, you see if it's a pain in the butt or not for you. There's the hood opening. Now, see when I try to get this on, if it's already wet, my glasses are gonna get wet from touching the wet fabric. So really you gotta be careful if you have glasses on. I usually take my glasses off if it's already raining and this is getting wet, I take my glasses off and I hold them off to the side or I put them on my pack and then I put the poncho tarp on and then I put my glasses back on. So one thing to note is now that I don't have my big ponytail, I cut it all off, you can actually pull this forward to the brim of your hat. And if you don't have a plastic bill, waterproof cap kind of thing, there's a lot of fabric, your hat will actually wick the rainwater back into your hood. I'm talking like all day you're in the rain. I'm not talking like you're out in the rain for 30 minutes. Like I'm talking like three, four days of rain. You keep your hat dry by having this over it. That's kind of a neat thing. I kind of figured that out by mistake, pulling it on in the rain, and I just didn't catch it. And later I went back in the video and I was like, huh. I was editing and I was like, that's pretty cool. That worked really well. Kind of gives it some structure, holds it out away from your face, and you know, really keeps that water from dripping into itself. If it's cold, if it's cold, I'm like this. I'm not gonna lie. Like I've got my gator on underneath and I got a hat and I seal this up and I just, I just hope no water drips in. Um, and it, it's usually fine. So now we've put this over ourselves, right? And that's the back there. And boom, we're waterproof, okay? So without even snapping the snaps, um, just out and about like intermittent rain, um, not wanting to deal, if it's really hot and raining and I just want like water protection, I don't want like warmth, I'll leave this as open as possible and I'll just have it over me like that, and I'm, I'm dry, I'm safe. Now, there's openings on the side, right? But the way that it hangs, like, no water's like finding its way in. Like, I've used this for months, months of rainy, wet conditions, like half the trail, okay? And it's been fine, it's been 100% fine. No water gets in that way. There's that much room on either side, so when your arms hang down, it, it overhangs completely. But you can see it is open. So as you hike, like this especially, if it's hot, you're gonna be super comfortable, okay? So now if it's cold and windy and the tarp's blowing all around and it's not staying where you want it to, you gotta snap it up, right? Like if, if, and, and if it's really raining, I'm, and if I'm out in the rain and I'm moving and like I need, a, I need rain protection, then I will do this, I will snap it up. 90% of the time, I'm gonna snap it up. Just worth noting that you don't have to every time. So I just went here, I found the two corresponding snaps, snapped them together. I'll show you the other one as well. Make my way down. Here's the next snap, two snaps, like this. Okay, and now that's the sleeve. Now the rest is not snapped. There's another snap down here, okay? And that snaps to the bottom. Um, you can snap it up to, the tarp is a little longer than you need for a poncho, right? So it hangs down, it hangs down to like my ankles. So if you're standing still and it's raining, you can wrap this sucker around you like this. And even with long pants, you can hang out and you're gonna be dry. Like 
you can just hunt you can hunker down a lot of times in really bad rainstorms when there was thunder and lightning and stuff like me and another person uh, that's how I met energy it was raining it was really nasty out we both sat down on a log because we didn't want to go up in elevation we just waited in the valley until the thunderstorm passed and I sat down and I just I had my own little body tent I had it tented out I sat down with my sleeping pad I had my pack in here and everything was dry and I we just hung out and talked and it wasn't a big deal all right so here's the next snap now the one annoying thing about the snaps is if you screw it up you won't know until you're like wearing it and that it feels a little weird or something's off like but after a few <laughs> after a few years of using this I've, I've got the snaps down it's not it's not that hard I'm just kind of deficient okay so then there's the other arm and that's that's 98% of the time how you're gonna wear it the snaps kind of keep it out so if you're worried about the openings on the sides um, especially if it's a little windy now there's no question that it's protected and you can see like there's not really an opening you know like so if you pull it apart then you can see the synthetic puffy underneath this is super warm like this is this is gonna be more than you need in most summer conditions further north you get you might need to do this every time um, like in the hundred mile and stuff you're so far north it, it, it's like 48 degrees in the dead of summer on like a rainy day um, then you might need to wear both of these to stay warm I that's a different kit I wouldn't use my summer kit that I used this last 600 miles in like north of Hanover I just wouldn't do it okay um, like the whites and things so for like most of your hiking especially in the summer like this is gonna be perfect especially where you're shelter hopping a majority like people all start out I'm gonna sleep in my tent every night you know whatever nobody people get lazy you're doing it every single day you're setting up your tent every day you, I mean you, you just get lazy I, I stopped using my hammock on trail because it was just too much every day and every night to set it up take it down you know it's it's just fiddly I just want to lay down and sleep the bivy sack I can just lay down and sleep this helps me do that it's very simple then so that kind of system I can layer it it's modular and it's plenty warm especially in the summer you do need a puffy in the summer you need insulation in the summer you can't just think oh it's summer it's not gonna be colder than 60 degrees 60 degrees is cold you're gonna be cold sleeping in 60 degrees make sure you have gear be safe okay I'm not telling you that you can just go out with a poncho tarp okay uh, you need the quilt you need a jacket you need something to keep you warm underneath this all right all right so jacket puffy rain gear right let's say worst case you got to wear all these things normally I just wear my rain gear and a long on top if it's cold or my rain gear and my t-shirt if it's hot okay I'm never I don't wear rain jackets and things like bare chested I don't like how the plastic sticks to me so I make sure I at least wear a t-shirt went on a lot easier all right, so I'm gonna hook it on the bill of the cap here because I really like how that works in the rain a lot. You can, I mean, I was wearing it like this most of the time, but then the hat gets wet and it drips back. Like, it's kind of like the troopers have their giant 10 gallon hats on or whatever, their state trooper hats, and then they have the plastic cover. Much the same way, protects your hat, keeps your, keeps your head warmer. All right, so then this comes on. We still have the snap snap, just find the holes. Boom, okay. Now we got the turtle shell effect going on. Definitely looks pretty puffy with the uh, poncho quilt underneath. But you can see, it doesn't really matter how big your backpack is. Usually, this doesn't have all my gear in it. Usually my backpack's a little like wider and taller. Um, but that extra length in the back really helps. If your pack comes up to here, you still have enough coverage in the back. See what I'm saying? So this isn't just for ultralight stuff. Honestly, if you have like a 70 liter Osprey Aether or you have a you know 90 liter whatever expedition pack this will probably still fit over most backpacks um, that extra length is really handy and uh, most of the time I don't snap most of the time I don't snap that up I just let it dangle it doesn't it doesn't really catch on my feet or anything if it is really windy and nasty and it's bothering me I'll take the two ends here take these uh, 
skyline attachments, and I will tuck them into my waist belt of my pack. Um, even this one has a waist belt. Um, like, I'll be wearing my waist belt underneath, and I'll tuck them in to that, or I'll tuck them into the hem of my shorts. And then it really curtails the flapping around and stuff. Some people carry a um, dedicated bungee cord and wear that as a belt to keep it down. And that, that does fine. Um, I have a piece of paracord that was my lanyard for my knife. I've used it from, for everything, from hanging my pack up on branches to um, rigging up my uh, poncho tarp. Uh, when I lost a piece of cordage, and I was like, well, good thing I have this piece of paracord. It's a very handy little piece of line. I can put that around my waist and then use the little cord lock and it will work as a belt. You can, you can tie a piece of string, whatever. Maybe like 5% max that I've seen have a poncho. Like uh, there was one girl that I hiked with, um, Igloo. She had a, a Cuban fiber poncho, I think from MLD or z Pax, one of those really nice piece of gear. She used it as a ground sheet for her tent and ooh, it made me cringe every time that she did that because I thought, you know, she's gonna wear through it. It's Cuban. It's the bad abrasion resistance. She never had a problem with it. Just gives me the heebie-jeebies. So, um, so really n not anyone has this, but I think that it does better than just a rain jacket. Most people don't wear rain pants and a rain jacket when there's ice and snow and things, you want you want rain pants. You want big bulky rain pants that will fit puffy pants underneath and stuff. Um, that's good, but like most people hike in fair weather, like hiking season, even if it's gonna be snow and stuff, it's not gonna be six degrees, negative 11 during the day usually. Um, so, you know, the the rain jacket, people say, ah, oh, you just need a rain jacket. Your shorts could get wet or whatever. I don't. I don't like that. I, I've done just a rain jacket in the summer and it's, I, I get cold. Well, you've got big arteries right here, femoral artery. Like if you cut here, you're, you're gonna bleed out, right? These are big heat transfer areas. So you have wet shorts, you have wet underwear. You're, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. Your, your legs are gonna take a lot of heat away from your body. So you need rain pants or you need to wear something that you can roll up to here and it'll stay or you need to wear shorts. That way, when you wear shorts or you just wear your underwear when it's raining, maybe you keep your pants stuffed down in your pouch, or you keep your long john stuffed down in your pack, you keep everything dry. Um, your underwear, your running shorts, they're not going to hang down past that and get wet. They're gonna be covered by this front panel and the back panel fabric. What, what the problem with wearing the long johns in the rain or wearing the long pants in the rain, unless you have rain pants, um, that moisture is gonna wick up, the rain is gonna wick up your pant leg from your ankles all the way up to your knees from your knees all the way up to your groin and you're gonna get wet even if you're covered down to your knees you're still gonna get wet above your knees so the shorts do a really good job of in the rain shorts and underwear do a much better job um, even if you're just gonna hike in your rain jacket and you're not gonna wear a poncho I'd say stay away from the long pants because it just turns your legs into cooling towers like constant wet you know exposure it's really bad so wear rain pants or wear shorts and underwear or just underwear and then keep keep your clothes dry like it doesn't matter if your legs get wet as long as there's not cold wet fabric just sapping the heat away from the insides of your thighs where there's that big heat transfer area and if you don't believe that your legs can uh, take a lot of heat away from your body i was an emt right you have people with heat exhaustion, heat exposure, they're, they're overheated, we need to cool them down. We have cold packs, we have hot packs, we have all, all kinds of things when I was an EMT. What we do with the cold packs, you can put them here, you can put them under the armpits, and, yep, down in the groin. So on that femoral artery, you're gonna, you're gonna and on the chest, you're gonna soak a lot of heat away from the body in that groin area. It's not fun to put ice packs on you know, people's private parts, but it works really well. So that means it really can hurt you out in the cold and the wet too. So you really need to be careful. Keep your groin, keep your above your knees, keep your thighs dry if you can. And if you don't want to wear rain pants, they kind of suck to put on and off, even with the zippers and things, um, to get your boots on and off, to get the rain pants on, you know, whatever. Um, it kind of stinks. This solves a lot of that problem. All right, so um, 
covered wearing it as rain gear. We covered wearing it with the um, poncho quilt underneath. I'm, I'm getting pretty hot, honestly. Um, and we covered it as a ground sheet. I was using it as a ground sheet a minute ago. I mean, it's just a waterproof barrier that keeps you from getting dirty and wet from underneath. Talked about the hood. Um, talked about its performance in the rain versus rain jackets. Okay. Um, so really, we talked about a lot of the stuff. You get the idea. It's, it's cheap, it's light, it's effective, it, it, it's multi-purpose, right? Um, but how much coverage do you really get with it as a poncho tarp? It's a really small tarp. It's like five feet by eight feet. That's not big enough, right? Yes, it is. If you're under six feet, um, I'm 5'10". I think if you're 5'11", if six feet or shorter, you're gonna be fine. I think that if you're taller than six feet, you're gonna have to pay the big tall person tax, and every, the tall people will know about that, and you're gonna have to go and look for a bigger poncho tarp. I think the Sea to Summit poncho tarp is significantly larger. Um, it's a little bit heavier too. Um, I think it uses a little bit heavier denier fabric. I'm not 100% sure on that. I wanna get one and try one out, but I'm broke, right? So, so you're gonna wanna get a little bit longer, a little bit bigger poncho tarp, like the Sea to Summit one. I'm pretty sure that one's larger. Um, look at the specs online. I can link it down below. Um, it's one that I've, I've seen people use before, um, and I, I think it's just as good as this. I haven't used it myself, but it's, it's a poncho tarp. It's still nylon, it's gonna be fun. Sea to Summit makes great sil nylon. They're, all their sil nylon stuff that I've used, my food bag and everything. My food bag, sil nylon, Sea to Summit, is the only thing that from two years ago when I started the trail, actually made it all the way through 2,200 miles. Everything else has been replaced. So if you're tall, pay the tall person tax maybe, get the Sea to Summit bigger version, pay a little bit more money maybe, pay a little bit more in weight, right? So I can link some videos probably throughout this. Uh, I can give you some links down below to videos where I have on trail, like actually hiking, stop, take video, go camping and stuff. And you can see, uh, my favorite one's probably the only like real true camping video I made on the AT. You can see how I set it up and I can explain in that video why I set it up that way. I will link that like right here, it'll pop up Watch that video, fast forward to where I set up camp if you want, and I'll explain why I set the tarp up that way and like what my theory is behind using this modified A-frame and stuff. It's really a very flexible thing, having a tarp shelter. You can do a lot with it. You can pitch it low, you can get a lot of warmth out of it, you can pitch it up and get a lot of ventilation, you can just protect straight down rain, you can pitch it like much more confined and more cave-like to get more protection on three sides. You can just lean to it if you're lazy and it does 90% of what all the other pitches are gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna show you one pitch, okay? You can go back in my other videos and see how I used it. I'm telling you, lean to, improvise lean to, you know, using it like up above, like an area tarp, um, <laughs> pitching it in the cave, all these things. I have videos where I show this stuff happening. There's all kinds of pitches you can do. If you really want like a very good tarp pitch resource, um, where I learned a lot of my pitches, got a lot of ideas from, other than just trying it out myself, there's a YouTuber called Papa Hiker. I'll link him here, here, wherever it pops up. Um, go check him out. He's like constantly trying out different tarp pitches and coming up with different things or reading about stuff and trying it out. He's really very good. I, when I was like, oh, can I use the poncho tarp on trail as my shelter? all the time, I looked at all of his small tarp pitches. I watched every single video, and it really helped It really helped me decide that this was gonna work, okay? So Papa Hiker, that's a good channel for you to go check out. I'm gonna go do one tarp pitch, and then I'm gonna head home. Let's we'll talk about something people have asked about poncho tarps online, right? And I'm gonna set up while I talk about this so we don't waste too much time, okay? But people ask, you know, if you've got a poncho tarp and you don't have rain gear, like, how do you set up in the rain? Like. Aren't you gonna get wet? And the answer is pretty much, yeah, you're, you're gonna get wet. I'll tell you that the reason that's okay is because um, as a summer solution, you don't wanna get wet in the cold, like, you know? But if you get a little bit wet, um, it's not gonna bother you, especially with how I have stuff set up, the synthetic sleeping equipment and the bivy and everything like that. Like, all I have to do is get my guy lines set up and then put my tarp up in the rain and then get under it and I'm fine. And I can set it up as a bigger area type tarp. If it's really nasty windblown rain, I'm gonna know what direction to pitch it and I'll just do a lean to real quick with my trekking poles. Honestly, too, this last summer I had my wind shirt, my, well, my rain jacket, my two layer um, 
OR Helium 2 rain jacket. So I would use that for like a little bit of rain protection to keep my torso warm and dry while I set up camp and stuff. Or in the mornings, if I woke up and it was raining and I needed to go out and go to the bathroom and stuff, I could wear that. Um, in most conditions, you want to pair the poncho tarp with a wind shirt, like a little bit of uh, just, you know, you can wear a wind shirt and use an umbrella for a rain system instead of having a rain jacket. People do that sometimes. Um, I think that it pairs well. Um, uh, instead of having like a, a dedicated puffy or something, I use the, the, the poncho quilt, right? The sleeping quilt that's wearable. And then I also have, um, because sometimes it's not cold enough to be wearing the quilt around all the time. I just want like a little something. That's where the wind shirt comes in or that two layer super duper light, like not really effective as a rain jacket, rain jacket, like just a little something to like kind of cut the wind, wear it as a windbreaker. Um, that for me is plenty of rain protection outside of the dead of summer even to use setting up my shelter. Like I'll have that on and then set my shelter up if it's really raining. If it's just drizzling or something, I, I don't even need that. Like, I'm probably sweaty from hiking. I get a little damp from like five minutes of exposure, to four minutes of exposure while I set this up. It's not that big a deal. Um, and then if you're shelter hopping, um, which I thought I was gonna shelter hop with this a lot more than I did. I thought that I would never really spend um, nights out. Like I'm gonna be hiking alone. I'm not gonna have friends. Like I just need something fast and light. I'll go shelter to shelter. I ended up making friends. I mean, you're gonna make friends on the AT. I was pretty negative about it because I was missing my old trail family, right? But I ended up making friends and, hey, it's a nice night. Let's camp out at this cliff or eh, it might rain, but let's sleep out in this field instead of going to the shelter. There's too many people. I don't want to deal with the mice. Okay. And I could keep up with the people that had tents, that had hammock setups. Didn't matter what the weather was. I'm always comfortable in this thing. This thing is not just for shelter hopping. It's much, much more capable than that. And I don't, I don't intend for what I said earlier in the video to re reflect on it that way. I don't want you to think that this isn't a standalone shelter because it actually is. And you really can get away with not having a rain jacket and just having this. You really can. I like the wind shirt to use as my warm, my warm layer around camp and a little extra something if it's cold when I'm sleeping, if I have to go to the bathroom and I don't want to pull my tarp down, just something. Um, just a little drizzle protection too. That's fine. You don't need another full rain jacket. You really don't, okay? So I don't want you to think that this is something you need to have a rain jacket with. Um, when it's really nasty cold winter, I like to have a rain jacket um, as like a, I'm switching to a wind shirt, but I've used like a, um, Frog Togs jacket in the winter was really excellent all through North Carolina and Virginia. This is for summer stuff, okay? You can just use this in the summer. I'm not saying just use this in the winter. I use this 90% of the time in the winter because um, if it was raining, this was my rain gear. You know what I'm saying? This is my rain gear. My rain jacket is more for warmth, okay? So uh, I'm done with that. I'll stop with that. But uh, I just, I want to make sure that you don't you don't misunderstand what I'm saying. This is part of your system and it's it's superior as rain gear. So let's talk about if you don't have a rain jacket and you're setting up camp, you're gonna get a little wet. Yeah, you might get a little damp, like four minutes of exposure or something. Have everything set up, tie all your guy lines on to your guy points first, pick out your spot. And if it's really raining, go and sit on the log. Like there's a log over there, put your pad down, pop a squat and just tent this out and wait for the big heavy band of rain to pass, you know, or sit under a tree and hang out. And then after the big heavy band of rain's gone, then set up your shelter when it's just drizzling or the rain has stopped. Like, there's no reason it has to happen right now. If it does, then deal with it, right? All right, so um, normally you have your trekking poles, right? Or you'd pick up some sticks and use those uh, to give some structure. You can rig up between trees like I did here as an A-frame. I've done that in a lot of videos, um, especially where I'm taking time on a nice night, set up a nice shelter, have a, a lot of big open coverage, kind of modified A-frame, or one side staked down to the ground, the other's more porched out like this. Um, this is just an A-frame setup. I think this is the worst way you can pitch the poncho tarp, honestly, unless you're going for like maximum warp retention like that. Um, I rarely, if ever, do that, okay? But this is just to show you, 
like the smallest amount of coverage you get really um, that's really like the, the worst coverage you're gonna get so I'm gonna show you something that I don't really use because it's bad coverage and show you that you still get a lot of coverage um, and you can only get better coverage with a lean-to so instead of this which is what this is you do this and then you have a lot bigger area because you're not wasting material trying to be covered on both sides you get that extra distance like that okay that makes sense all right so really the longer your guy line you can carry 60 feet of guy line and you won't even notice the weight difference some of these strong light glow wire type cords are just so light that it's worth carrying like 100 feet of it just to make sure that you have cordage where you need it and then you trim down and you get rid of what you don't use as you go okay but here like you see it's easier with the long cordage to stake it out where you want it with the short cordage if i wanted to pitch it up high like this which i don't really do on trail um, i would have to use twigs and branches and things it works it's not super sturdy but with a pitch like this it's so high i'm just showing you how it works if i was actually using this and i have used high pitches like this i'm anticipating just straight down drizzle no sideways rain at all because then i've got very little protection from that sideways rain like this you pitch it lower in bad weather you get more protection higher ventilation space living room whatever all right so here you see the a-frame shape it's not perfect i just threw it up real quick you could guide this out better um, you can make sure that it's all taut and everything but it's just to show you the coverage okay so i pitched this a little higher so i don't have to crawl in underneath it you know i don't have all my camping stuff here i'm just showing you the tarp today i haven't bloused out the hood or anything i've got the ridge line underneath it um, if you want a video on like how to pitch a tarp uh, check out papa hiker like i said or if you request it i will do it well, this is just showing you so i'm 5'11 that's my wingspan right there you can see it's pretty much a foot shorter than my wingspan this is plenty of coverage so on a normal night i'm sleeping right here or here depending on how i have the pitch so if you're laying here and you've got maybe you know this much space between you and the tarp this much space between you and the tarp and you you're in your you're on your sleeping pad and uh you've got your trekking pole here and you've got a trekking pole here down to the ground and maybe the ground's right here okay this is plenty of coverage plenty of protection pretty good ventilation depending on how you have it set up and you're gonna have reaching out like this okay I can't touch both ends it's it's pretty long tarp so laying down you're gonna be fine you're gonna be covered head and toe I, I wouldn't go smaller okay I think that this is probably the smallest tarp I would go with even with the bivy but uh, it's it's absolutely sufficient you can see how if this is down at ground level it's pretty sealed off you have to crawl in here that's why I don't use this you can pitch it a little higher but then it's open on the sides you have to crawl in here I do the lean-to instead have you ever seen a lean-to shelter or, uh, or a lean-to uh, firewood shed it's just it's just a roof you know there's no sides or anything and that's all you really need um, if it's gonna be nastier weather there's different pitches you can do in things that get you more three-sided protection um, really even in some of the worst rainstorms I've been fine with a lean-to or with an improvised lean-to where one of these sides is staked down to the ground and the rest of it's just a sheet like this. Um, you can see even with the least space inside, you get plenty of coverage and uh, you're plenty protected from the worst storms. There's better pitches than this for ease and comfort, um, but this is probably the smallest pitch I would ever use, maybe an extreme cold. Especially with a bivy sack, <laughs> you really don't need a bigger tarp. And uh, I think that I wouldn't go smaller than this, but this is plenty of coverage to lay down here lengthwise anyways guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope this helped you decide whether or not you want to try out a poncho tarp i'm going to link down below uh, some options for you um, i think that my trail co at the time of this video is sold out is what one of my subscribers wrote to me so um, i'm going to go ahead and link that one anyway if you want to wait for it um, it's really getting out of the main hiking season now so there's plenty of time to find a used one uh, my trail co poncho or one of these um, go like clones that was produced by big agnes um, or you can go ahead and look for a Sea to Summit poncho. I'm pretty sure they have enough production that they're not going to run out of poncho tarps around Christmas time. Um, so thank you again for checking it out. I hope this gave you a good look at the features. I'm going to try to link in as many videos as I can. I'm shooting now. I have to go back and edit uh, in the next few days. 
So I hope that I can put in enough clips of me using it in the woods. I hope that you've seen that looking back on this video um, and you see that it is actually useful, it is actually effective, it is actually a viable uh, shelter system. I really enjoyed it and I think that it will bring your pack weight down and I think that it will really help you get to five pounds, sub 10, whatever you're looking for, whatever you're trying to do. So guys, honestly, um, lately here, I've been getting pretty busy. I've got the MPRE, which is the ethics portion of the bar exam in Tennessee coming up. And then I've got the actual bar exam admission stuff I have to send in and I need to start studying for the bar um, in February. And I've got a lot going on um, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting pretty stressed out and um, I'm not really sure how everything's gonna work out. I'm, I'm not really happy with what's going on right now. So I need to spend a little bit more time studying. But as far as the gear I used this summer, I think we're pretty much caught up with all the most important stuff, the core of the kit. So um, go ahead and check those videos out if you haven't yet. And if you see the first video where I show everything that I had with me when I finished the trail, if you have any questions about that gear that I haven't covered yet, please let me know in the comments. I don't know if it's something you guys really want to see to uh, see the rest of the gear. Maybe you just want to see the poncho tarp and the quilt and the bivy sack and the sleeping pad, you know, because that's what you need, right? Um, but if you want to see how my clothing system works, like uh, want to hear about the kilt and all that stuff, uh, you're going to have to let me know in the comments. I'm pretty busy and um, I'm kind of shifting gears to studying more rather than doing more creative projects like my writing and my posts, my blog posts, my YouTube videos and stuff. So please let me know in the comments if you wanna see any of that other gear and I'll go ahead and review it for you, talk about it and explain how it works just like I did with this. So until the next video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting the channel through those links and directly through the Venmo link. I really appreciate it. It really helps out the channel a lot. I don't get paid to do this stuff and it does take a lot of time, especially the editing. The videoing is the fun part. The editing is a lot of work. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content about ultralight shelter systems, ultralight hiking gear, hiking gear in general. Don't forget to comment if you want to see anything in particular, anything at all, trail related, hiking related, camping related. I've got a lot of learning under my belt and I'm happy to share with you guys, but I need to know what you want to know. So thank you for the likes and subscribes. Thank you for all the support and we'll see you in the next video.